I say, Reynolds, what's this I hear about the Army being interested in this project you're lobbying for? Well, it's not for publication, but they're planning to build an ammunition dump near the dam. I thought they were spending all that money just to help out a handful of farmers. <laughs> <laughs> and when I mentioned to the committee that more than 50,000 troops are stationed within a mile of the depot, they immediately increased the appropriation by a half a million dollars. 50,000 troops. 50,000 troops. Well, don't forget, Mr. Hanlon, all of our shipyards are not located on the coast. I don't think I understand. Well, now, believe it or not, we have four shipways on the lakes. They're turning out an average of a ship a month. That explains a lot of things. With your influence in Washington, why don't you get a bill passed to increase the old age pension for glamour girls? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, listen here, girlie. We're not following this precarious occupation for uh, love. <laughs> what our friend is trying to say is that you want to organize, start a revolving fund, and you'll be able to speak the language that he understands. <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> now that you mention it, it is an ideal location for an air base. The enemy could never spot us in the air, and it's out of the range of the naval guns. It's very perfect. Tell Coffee is served for now. Oh, oh coffee. Yeah. 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 Well, come on. Wait for me, Gentlemen, if you ask me, I would say this has been a most successful day. Well, it has for me. Now I can postpone that strike until the project has eaten up more of the appropriation. <laughs> but, gentlemen, since war has been declared, we've learned one lesson. We must proceed cautiously. I think we should make plans to slip into some neutral country before the Intelligence Bureau gets after us. Perhaps when the war hysteria dies down, they will become more lax. These Americans are like children. They forget quickly the fire that burnt their fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doctor, you've actually found a very efficient method of prosecuting our war of nerves. No, no, no. I'm not going to accept all credit. These gentlemen have insisted we could destroy more ammunition plants before we have to leave. Yeah. That last operation of yours, carried out with such finesse, beautiful. Sir? No, thank you. I may be detained here for some time. Oh, uh, are you going back to Cleveland tonight, Kenny? No, I'm staying over for a couple of days. Fine. You stop into my office tomorrow morning. A gentleman patient to see you, sir. Patient? I see patients only at my office during the day. Ask him to go elsewhere. I explained you seldom saw patients at your home. What's his name? Mr. Cologne, or rather, Monsieur. I never heard of him. Seems very urgent, sir. Insists it's a matter of life and death. Why don't you see him and get it over? Oh, very well. Be back in a moment. Oh, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Don't forget your bedside manners. Oh, no. Oh, that would be all, Stevens. Dr. Sanders? That's right. But I'm not in the habit of receiving patients in my home, especially at night. I have come a long way to see you. Plenty of other good doctors. I'm a very sick man. Sit down, please. You don't appear to be in any danger of dying. You are quite wrong. 
All men are in danger of dying. The important question is when. Who are you? Just why did you come here? Wallace, how are things with you in Detroit? Fine. I'm faced with a strike that may tie up my whole plan. 10,000 men. That's too bad. <laughs> yes, because I'll have to close one of my factories waiting for parts. Trouble is, uh, you boys should hire me as a lawyer. Then you could really wreck your business. <laughs> Listen to him. At that, Van Dyke, my plant might be able to use you over in Pittsburgh to throw a few monkey wrenches into the legal machinery. You must be mistaken. I don't know what you're talking about. That's strange. I was sure you would remember me. Your voice seems familiar. But I'm positive I've never seen your face before. Is that you are but half right? You did see me before. Now you've changed since then. Yes, sir, you have. Nurture! Head doctor! No, no, please! Please, I don't deserve this! Someone screamed. Sounded like a banshee. Just a momentary upset. Nothing serious. Sorry we intruded. Are you sure everything's all right? Yes, quite. Gentlemen, please accept my apology. I, I shall be detained longer than I anticipated. But in that case, I think we can go. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. The doctor knows what he's doing. So do I. This patient looks crazy to me. Weird sort of fellow at that. Like a European. Seems to me I've seen him before. Well, let's go. Come on. All very straight. Oh, yeah. Can we drop you someplace, Kearney? No, thank you. I have a cab. I have given you. Dr. Saunders wants you. You may prepare the guest room for Monsieur Canon. He'll be with us for some time to come. Very well, sir. doing in my cab. I thought perhaps you're going in my direction. Well, I'm not going in your direction. Mr. Kearney, are you quite sure you know in what direction you're really going? Why, of course I know. Incidentally, how did you learn my name? Did you rather I called you Toko Onitobi?
Well, the taxi cab where I identified the body said that he picked him up in front of Dr. Saunders' place. Then all we have to do is grab this Dr. Saunders and ask him what he knows. Sure, and put him on his guard, and then where are we? Uh, no, this is one time that we've got to watch our step. Uh, what do you want me to do? Suppose you drop in on the dock and see what you can find out without letting him know that we suspect the place. We have a report that a niece lives there. You might work through her. Don't tell me. Let me guess. She's 50, flat-footed, and fat, with buck teeth, and probably wears glasses. No, no, look, Sherlock. This is your first case, and we don't want you to come it up, see? We don't expect you to marry the girl. Just see what you can find out, huh? Okay, Chief, I can dream, can't I? You kid. I'm Alice Saunders. How do you do, Miss Alice? Won't you step in, please? Thank you. It's good to be back. Where's Uncle? He's not very well this morning. He's still in bed. I wouldn't disturb him just yet. So sorry. Is it anything serious? Well, I don't know, Miss. It's a real last night out for dinner party. Oh, dear. Everything looks just the same. Anything new? Only myself, I'm afraid, miss. <laughs> yes? Uh, miss Saunders was expecting me. Dick Martin. Yes. Come in, Mr. Martin. Thank you. Miss Saunders, would you see you, Mr. Martin? How do you do? I'm from the department. I'd like to see your father, Dr. Saunders. He's my uncle. He isn't feeling well. Is there something I could do? Why, yes. Uh, your uncle gave a dinner party here last night. Do you know who his guests were? I just arrived myself. Maybe Stevens could tell you. Stevens, was there a man by the name of Kearney here last night? Yes, sir. You know anything about him? No. If you could tell me what this is all about, maybe I could help. Well, you see, the police found the body of Kearney last night. He was either murdered or committed suicide. Oh, how awful. And if I could see your uncle, it might clear the matters up. I'll try to see him. Stevens, where's the dining room? In there, sir. Uncle Bill? Mm hmm? Uncle Bill, it's Alice. I just got in. Oh, what is it, dear? Uncle Bill, let me in. I'm back. Oh, Alice, dear, forgive me. But I was dozing. Stephen said you didn't feel well. No, nothing serious. Nerves, that's all. I've decided to remain in my room for a long rest. But I'm so glad you're back, dear. Can't I come in for a moment? I have so much to tell you. It's been so many years since I've seen you. Oh, I, I'm sorry, dear. Isn't there something I can do for you? Are you a new servant? Not exactly. Rather, a very old friend of your uncle's, Monsieur Colomb. I'm Alice, his niece. Greetings. You're very sweet. And a beautiful young woman. You'll excuse me. What's your first name? Uh, Richard, but uh, you can call me Dick. Oh, Dick, this is Monsieur Cologne. He's an old friend of Uncle Bill's, Dick Martin. How do you do? It's a pleasure. Were you here at the dinner party last night? No, I came late. Do you uh, know a Mr. Kearney? Kearney? I'm afraid not. Is there something wrong? Just a slight case of murder. It's too bad. 
Can I help in any way? No. Nope. Excuse me. Handsome devil, isn't he? I'd hate to meet him in a dark alley. Oh, I don't know. Make it a moonlight night in a park bench. It might be exciting. Oh, yeah? What's this first name business? Well, uh, I didn't know him any better than you did. How long has he lived here? I don't know that either. How about yourself? It's been years. Listen, do I see the uncle or don't I? He must be terribly ill. He wouldn't even see me. Funny business. Aren't you scared living here like this? You better come along with me. I think I can take care of myself. What's your name? Alice. Okay, Allie. I'll uh, see you later. Oh, your room is ready, Miss Alice. Thank you. Stephen, tell me something about our guest. Well, there's not much I know. When he came here last evening, I thought he was simply another patient of your uncle's. He's an interesting man. Yes, very. Very well this morning, sir. He's still in bed. He'll see me. He'll tell him it's Wallace. Yes, sir. Will you please wait? I wasn't to be disturbed, Stephen. It's Mr. Wallace, sir. He's below. Please obey my orders. Well? It's impossible, sir. Dr. Sanders can't see you. medical history of a sick person possibly interest an industrialist from Detroit. You're the man who came here last night. As a patient, Mr. Wallace, as a patient.
Mr. Wallace, miss. He just left. I heard a funny noise. Is this room below mine? Yes, miss. Then it came from here. Is there something wrong? I heard a strange noise, like a body falling. Oh, I was stumbling. I was awkward. Yes, but there were gurgling sounds. Oh, I was humming. Is my voice as bad as that? Humming. Have you known my uncle very long? Uh, time passed so swiftly, it's hard to say. I think I first met him abroad. Some kind of international meeting, I believe. Are we going to have the pleasure of your company very long? It depends on circumstances. He sounds like a man of destiny. One must not flirt with one's destiny. With the world and the condition it is today, aren't we all flirting with destiny? I suppose I finished my book upstairs. Oh, no, please. I didn't mean to disturb you. Excuse me. is the time? Nine add three plus nine. And you tell me. Two one, three one, four one. Okay. Listen, Ryder. Have you seen the headlines? I certainly have. I never knew Curly had heart trouble. He didn't. He was only 34. Sound as a dollar. And that Japanese dagger. What about that? One of us ought to go immediately back to Washington. I tried to get Dr. Saunders on the phone, but he's sick, according to the butler. Wallace is still registered at his hotel, but he's out. Maybe we can catch him before he returns to Detroit. Both of us should go back. I'll grab the first plane out of Pittsburgh here and meet you in front of Wallace's hotel. Good. See you then. Morning mail, Mr. Ryder. Here's the letter. Perhaps should have been thrown in the basket, but it seemed rather strange. Why? It's a plastic surgery ad, but it mentions no name. That'll be all, Miss Hanson. Get me Amos Hanlon in New York, the Exchange Bank. Mr. Hanlon, Mr. Ryder calling long distance from Pittsburgh. Hanlon speaking. I think I saw him walk to the elevator a few moments ago. You may tell us on his room if you please. Thank you. Mr. Wallace's room. Yes. Wallace, is that you? Who is it? Ryder. What time is it, Wallace? Nine, add three plus nine, and you tell me. Two, one, three, one, four, one. Van Dyke is with me. We've got to see you right away. Come up to my room.
Wallace. Obviously, he isn't here. I'm going to try again to get Saunders. I want Dr. Saunders. National 6516. I want to talk to Dr. Saunders. I'm very sorry, but Dr. Saunders is still confined to his room. Don't bother. I just want to make sure he was there. in my room. Oh! What is the matter with you? There was a horrible something in my room. Are you quite sure it wasn't a nightmare? Oh, well, it most certainly wasn't. There was no one in your room, miss. I couldn't find a trace. Shall I look outside? Yes, please do. No one. You see? You think my eyes are playing tricks on me? When a young woman's nerves commence to give way, it is time she sought refuge in a strong man's arms. I just ran into yours. Mine might be dangerous. You're a strange man. I've been trying to make you out. Why try? Curiosity killed a cat. Oh. Don't misunderstand. I'm not worth bothering your pretty head about. What if I think differently? Then I would say that you're a silly young creature. Why did we leave the cab down the street and walk? Just a precaution. I still think we should notify the police. After all, we can prove we're Americans. We just can't afford to risk the publicity. the doctor immediately. I'm very sorry, sir. Still, I'll go up to his room. Perhaps I'd better speak to him first. Hey. Which 
is his room. I won't need you. Saunders. Ryder. Let me in. I've got to talk to you. Go ahead and talk. I'm not seeing anyone. You know, of course, about Kearney. He's dead, yes, I know. Well, so is Wallace. Van Dyke and I found him in his hotel room. The point is, Van Dyke is breaking. Lost his nerve. Wants to seek protection with the police. There's only one protection against a weakling rider. Take the outside door to my cellar. I needn't tell you more. Saunders is going to meet us in the cellar. He wants to talk to us. I thought he was ill, confined to his room. Only a subterfuge. feeling this is a trap. Where are the lights? Lighten up. Why isn't Saunders here? The important thing, you're here. You turned weakling, Van Dyke. We can't afford to take any chances with you. Accommodating, Mr. Ryder. Thank you. all about, but I like it. There's a body in the basement. A what? A body, right by the cellar stairs. I stumbled over it. Yeah, let's take a look. It was right here. It isn't there now? There's nothing to be frightened of. Well, I don't like it. Come on.
I can't understand it. I know I stumbled over something. Maybe I'm going daffy. Well, here's something else that's darn queer. This man Wallace was another guest of your uncle's. That makes two of them. Oh, this is terrible. Stevens, where have you been? In the dining room, sir. You haven't been in the cellar, have you? No. Seen this? Boy, that's incredible. And we were both at that dinner, too. Alice, I'm going upstairs and talk to your uncle if I have to break that door in. It might be better if I spoke to Dr. Saunders. I might have more influence. Monsieur Colon, I stumbled over a body in the cellar. It's still there? No, it disappeared. Perhaps it is your nerves, I guess. There's nothing wrong with Miss Saunders' nerves. Of course not. Come on, Alice. A body in the cellar? Oh. Bill, I have to see you. Something terrible has happened. I'm very tired, dear. Please don't disturb me. Dr. Saunders, two of your friends who were here last night are dead. That's most unfortunate. Heart failure, probably. I know, Uncle, but there's someone dead down in our cellar. Alice, I'm afraid your imagination is running away with you. No, it isn't. Alice, I insist you allow no disturbance to be made. My own condition won't stand it. Matters are quite all right in the house. But, Uncle... Please obey me, Alice. Very well. That door always been locked since you've been here? Yes. Well, haven't you even seen him? No, I haven't. Who takes care of him, feeds him? Stevens or Monsieur Cologne. That's a fine pair. I don't like either one. I'm going to take you out of here. It's too dangerous. I'm not frightened. I'll be all right. Nothing happens. You take and call me here. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night, young man. Good night, monsieur. Right here, I found the body of Mr. Kearney. And just about this time. No hard failure this time. It's murder. Jap daggers. Mm, judging by their clothes, they were no tramps either. Well, get busy, officer. Get on the phone. Right. All right. But Stevens the butler has disappeared. Do you have any idea where he could have gone? No, he just hasn't come back. Okay, Alice, watch your step and I'll be over as soon as I can. That's a lot of bunk, I tell you. Miss Saunders says the butler's disappeared. Well, this is one time I refuse to suspect the butler in the case. There's no doubt those men found at the Jap embassy were murdered, but what do you make of those two daggers in their hands? Well, it adds up to only one thing. The man who did the job was also responsible for the Kearney and Wallace murders. Who was the fifth guest at Saunders' house that evening? Helen, the banker. 
Oh, I think I see what you're driving at. It may only be a hunch, but if we take Hanlon to Dr. Saunders, we may force the real murderer out into the open. Suppose you grab a plane, Dick, and have a little talk with this Hanlon. Point out to him the danger that he's in and see if you can get him to come to Washington with you. Delivery letter for you. And Will you marry me? What for? So I can beat you up. It's the only way I can get you out of here. Say, has the uh, butler shown up yet? No, he's probably frightened and quit his job. Alice, you were right. There was a body in the cellar last night. You know that? I'm positive of it. Only there were two bodies. They were found on the steps of the Japanese embassy with a dagger clutched in each hand. And they weren't killed there. Their bodies were dumped there. Why should you think they came from here? There were two more of your uncle's dinner guests who were here that night. Mr. Martin, I found this note in the dining room. It's from the butler. It's Stevens. He's gone to see a sick friend. A brand new alibi, eh? You recognize the handwriting? No. Yes, I recognize it. You would. You doubt me? I'm not accusing anyone, Cologne. All I know is that four men are dead under mysterious circumstances after leaving this house. <laughs> Possible coincidence, but most unfortunate. Yes. There's only one guest left alive, Hanlon. Let us hope that Mr. Hanlon escapes the fate of the others. Yeah. Get your hat, Alice. As long as Monsieur Colomb is here, I feel perfectly safe. So, so long. Nice fellow. I hope you'll be happy. Goodbye. You're leaving? Yes, I must. It's most unfortunate, but your uncle will understand. Well, will we see you again? Who knows in this crazy world? Gentlemen, is my considered decision. This institution will not lend its support to any company, even in this emergency, which permits itself to be forced into bankruptcy because of the demands of its employees. What is it? There's a gentleman here to see you. No, I'm too busy. I think you should see this man immediately, Mr. Hamlin. Very well. 
Uh, there, gentlemen, you see what a slave, even a banker, can be to his secretary. Uh, we'll continue this talk after lunch. I'm Dick Martin. Uh, sit down, Mr. Martin. I don't have to tell you, Mr. Hanlon, but in the past 48 hours, four of your friends have died. Well, I'm not exactly illiterate, you know. I can read the newspapers. I gather you're not frightened either. A busy man has very little time to indulge in feminine emotions. Uh, just what do you want? I'm hearing your interest, Mr. Hanlon, and possibly the interest of this country. In the present emergency, we can't afford to lose any of the much-needed business leaders. And do you think my life is in danger? I'm almost certain of it. Here's something I received in the morning mail. I hadn't intended to speak of it. Do you have any idea who the murderer or murderers might be? I do not. If I had, I would inform the police. Of course. As a good American, Mr. Hanlon, possibly you will be willing to cooperate with our department in trapping the criminals. Uh, just what have you in your mind? Well, we're reasonably certain that these killings have occurred in or near Dr. Saunders' home in Washington. I see, and you want me to act as a decoy or bait. Oh, is that it? Of course, there will be danger. Well, I'm not afraid of danger. I'd like very much to meet this murderer. Even more than you. Good. We'll take the first plane back to Washington. May I use that phone? Thank you. Chief, you cover the inside of the house. Be sure you keep your eye on handling. Okay. I'll take the outside. Have a look at upstairs. You're not going to leave me here alone. He'll be here with you. This is Cologne's room. You mean it was? And this is Saunders. All right, Saunders, come on out of where coming in. You said this was always locked. It always has been. messed up everything as it is. Take it easy, Stevens. You were there on the couch. Sit down. No, 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 I, I'm all right. Who is this? Stevens, the missing butler. What happened to you? He was slugged and tied up in the basement. You didn't happen to do that to yourself, did you? Why, no, sir, I... Stevens, did you write this? No. Cologne again. Or Dr. Sanders, who also disappeared. Sanders missing? Yeah. What do you know about that? Well, nothing, sir. Who fed him? Well, I did. What illness was he suffering from? Well, I don't know, sir. When I brought him his food, he always spoke from an anteroom or a dark corner. You couldn't have possibly have sneaked in there just once and fed him, could you? Oh, well, I... Yeah, you fell down on the job. Who, Miss Saunders? Oh, Miss Saunders, my eye. She's my best girl. Your best girl? My best girl operator. Or was. So you're a flatfoot, eh? How well did you know Saunders? I knew him slightly in a business way. Did you know that he was supposed to have mysteriously disappeared from a ship in the Orient ten years ago? Why, that's ridiculous. Something new, Chief? No, this is something old. See, the real Miss Saunders came to my office. She's been living abroad for the last ten years on the legacy. 
When she saw this picture of her uncle in the paper, she figured something was wrong. Well, I figured if somebody was posing as her uncle, I could put something... this has nothing to do with me. I'm leaving. Oh, sit down. You are by 12 o'clock. Better get him a drink. I'll get it. This is my first request of wholesale surgery. Are these my subjects? Yes. All trusted members of the Order of Black Dragons, ready to serve Empire until death. <clears throat> and the Americans, they are to impersonate. You have photos of them. I will need many angles. <laughs> Better than that. We have perfect replicas. Death masks. Oh, good. I shall be ready to operate as soon as the surgery is prepared. Uh, uh, this is Dr. Nakuchi. He will assist you. This way, Herr Doctor. Thank you.
The transformation is complete. Our faith in your ability was well founded, honorable doctor. We owe you and your fear uh, our undying gratitude for what you have done for us. Anything I can do to hasten the establishment of our new order and to destroy the archaic democracies is an honor and a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you accompany these men and they will see that you are fittingly rewarded. Thank you. Doctor, what's the meaning of this? I'm a member of the party. The Führer will hear of this. That's just what we're going to prevent. The little trick we learned from you Nazis. Leave no evidence behind. Let no sentimentality stand in your way. Since you're the only one who knows our real identity, this is merely a precaution to make sure that no one else finds them out. All right. Sorry, we have to ask you to share these quarters with someone else. But he won't be with us for long, Herr Doctor. You will pay for this, you apes. You swine. The Führer will wipe you off the face of the earth. Get out of here, huh? He evidently made good his escape to America and set out to kill us one by one. Why didn't you kill him like the others? Oh, I was necessary to the completion of his plan. Instead, he inoculated me with an insidious serum which quickly transformed me into this horrid monster you see before you. <laughs> and you must go on living. Oh, no! 